Good evening and welcome to the Texas Bluebonnet Arts and Crafts Group Spotlight Virtual Art Exhibit and Art Talk Series. Artists are introduced in an art talk format showing their artwork and videos. All attendees will be muted until the Q&A part of the program. The <clears throat> Texas Blue Bonnet Arts and Crafts Group Spotlight Virtual Art Exhibit and Art Talk Program is featuring Jose Angel Hernandez. Jose will share his artistic journey, art technique and style with pictures and videos. Jose will introduce us to his portrait series, his figurative art series, the large creation of life series and his 3D mixed uh, media series. Jose's artwork is a passionate style of Francis Goya, of Pablo Picasso, of Joaquin Sorella, Fr uh, Frida uh, Kahlo, Jose Clemente Orsigo, and Diego Rivera. As we go through our artist artistic journey this evening, Jose, what do you want people to experience and remember about you as an artist and your work? Well, first of all, thank you, Michelle. I truly appreciate the opportunity. And for me, it's an honor to take part in um, this artist spotlight. Um, I'm an artist by trade. I am a, an instructor, a corporate instructor. So besides talking about my artwork and, and my journey as an artist, I, I, I want to take advantage of this opportunity and share some of my tricks of the trade. And I'm not saying like I'm super, super successful artist, um, but I do have a name already established based on my style. And as I go through the different eras of um, my art career, I'll be highlighting some of the things that I do to enhance um, my artistic journey from a business point of view. <laughs> um, so hopefully people will get something out of it besides just seeing my work. Ah. Well, it will be a great journey. So why don't we start with your bio and I'm going to have you kind of summarize your bio and that wonderful picture <laughs> of the artiste <laughs> in the paintbrush, if you will. Sure. sure. Um, so I was born in 1956 and I was born in Puerto Rico, but my mother would only go to Puerto Rico to give birth. I was actually raised in the Northeast of the United States, Massachusetts, New York area. Um, throughout my entire life, I have always worked in the automotive industry. So I have a bachelor's degree in business administration and I am a corporate trainer or used to be a corporate trainer mm -hmm. and given the opportunity to live in different parts of the world and experience different markets like Latin America, I've been to Japan and whatnot. At the turn of the century, so we're talking about 1999, turning over to the year 2000, there was um, a lot of negative energy in the environment. People were talking about Y2K. They were talking about, you're gonna lose your money in the bank, don't fly that day. I sat down and started reflecting on what has happened up to the moment. And I was years old at the time and realized that I've done a lot of good things for a lot of people. As a corporate instructor, this is what I do. I help people. I help them with skills, on customer handling and selling and customer mm -hmm. loyalty. I do the management side of the business and train managers from a financial point of view, from an operational point of view. So at that moment, I realized I had not ever done anything solely for myself. So a lot, of, for a lot of people, but never really focus on myself. And with all this negative energy going around, I said, well, you know what? This new century, I'm gonna do something for myself. <laughs> never painted. When I was a kid, I used to draw my father drinking his daily Budweiser. That's as far as my artistic journey was up to that moment. Um, so I decided to become an artist. So I went to little workshops here and there, bought a whole bunch of books. Today I have over 150 books on art and started learning the art business. Um, so it started in the year 2000 at the age of 43. I jokingly say it, it was my midlife crisis. <laughs> the fact is that once I started having fun creating art, it actually became my midlife journey. Mm. Mm -hmm. um, about this photograph, <laughs> it's a self-portrait. Uh -huh. like I said, I started in the year 2000. Uh -huh. In 2003, 
this is when I took this photograph, mm -hmm. I had a, a shift in my artistic career. Yeah. That's when I got a website and I, I took mm -hmm. art more seriously from a business point of view. I want to put my art on people's walls. Yeah. And yeah. that photograph in itself is representative of my website. <laughs> and my website is words yeah. and colors uh -huh. net. So the fact that I'm listening, those are words. The fact that I have a brush coming out of my mouth is, um, <laughs> so it's very, very meaningful, that photograph. And again, it was in the year 2003 when I took that photograph and everything like changed. Yeah, 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 it's a great picture. Thank you. Oh, it, it truly is. Now, um, this is a page that's very interesting and I'm gonna kind of let you describe what it is because I know it's kind of a composite of all your work. And so um, why don't you kind of explain it, well, how it relates to you and what you're doing? So I'm gonna start from the end. Mm -hmm. and back to the beginning on the right hand side a e-magazine electronic magazine mm -hmm. from Los Angeles is called Voyage LA and I was interviewed by them oh. so those the current body of work that I'm working on right now mm -hmm. which is 3D mixed media mm -hmm. but that is not how I started mm -hmm. back in the year 2000 um and there's timelines so, so the our timeline, on the far left side, you have portraits and figurative art, which right. I have a specific mission statement for that. Mm -hmm. Then moved on to what I call Journey 2013 to current time, which is 3D mixed media. Ah, oh, okay. So I'll break these down. What did I do in each one of these phases? Right, yeah. Okay. So here's the next slide. Right. The, this is what you call your portrait learning phase. Okay. It's the portrait learning phase. Right. I think as an artist, the more you practice, yes. the more you're going to get. Yeah. I worked for a large corporation that we had our own internal internet. They used to call it intranet, uh -huh. where associates will communicate through this network uh -huh. that's called the intranet. In that, they had a little section for people to sell stuff. Mm -hmm. Mostly like, you know, you want to sell your bed or a sofa. Mm -hmm. I decided oh. to post <laughs> yeah. selling art. So I, I offered to paint a portrait for $25. We're talking about an oil painting. Yeah. That will not get any artist to touch it for less than a couple hundred dollars. Yeah for $25 only because I wanted to practice. Besides that, there's a good feeling behind painting someone that is meaningful for, for another person. Mm -hmm. so, to be honest with you, I painted a lot of dead people because the only way they could remember them in the walls of, of their house is by having a portrait of them. That's right. For example, the top left one, at least the lady uh, on the left side, the other is the daughter. So I did these commissions, a lot of family um, portraits with the objective of practicing. Mm. So it really wasn't about the money. No. I mean, canvas alone will probably cost me, you know, five, ten dollars uh, plus oil, plus time, mm -hmm. I'm making money. The learning in this is, look, if you want to practice, then you're going to have to find some references and what better references than real life people that you need to match mm -hmm. you know you got to find that likeness mm -hmm. um so that's that particular stage and i call it my learning phase like i said and i painted a lot of people this is just an, a small example on the far top right is the three kids of a co-worker bottom left side is my friend ignacio with his girlfriend that eventually they got married and, she, and he lives in Santiago, Chile. In the bottom center is somebody's grandmother. Far right bottom is a, a, a photograph that somebody really liked. <laughs> kind of like half right. yeah. there, but that's <laughs> what she wanted. To, and her cat was passed away as well. Yeah. That's and great. That's the great. middle top is Oscar. Oscar actually used to work for me. That one I gave away. Mm. 
celebrate the Christmas um, celebration to Oscar. Yeah. So again, this is all practice. So the learning here is the more you practice, the, the better, better you get. Yeah, that's absolutely right. I continued my practice. Yes. Painting more people. And this time I just got references from the internet. I did an entire body of work mm -hmm. of Latino artists in Hollywood. Uh -huh. So the title of, of this <laughs> is right in the middle. It's the middle canvas. Yeah. Actually 21 small canvases. Wow. What I like about this, this work is I try to document the pioneers in the world of, of entertainment, Hollywood, big screen specifically. Mm -hmm. If you look at the, the middle one, it says Hollywood, mm -hmm. Latin roots. To the left of that is Dolores de Rios. Ah. A film in the silent era, black and white, and some films with Charlie Chaplin. And so the one to the right of that is um, Lupe Velez, which also black and white era. Mm -hmm. um, and I worked my way out, obviously picking, um, I had a, a vast yeah. of, of different artists, but I picked the ones I liked, but I <laughs> mixed it up. So you'll find some Cubans there. Oh you yeah, I, I recognize a few of them. <laughs> Um, one of my favorite is Top Middle, which is Rita Moreno. She's oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. She yeah. won an Oscar. Yes, she um, did. Best Supporting Actress. Mm -hmm. What's interesting about this body of work as well is I included some people that a lot of people don't know had Latin roots, like mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Rita Hayward. Yeah. They were actually not fully Latino, but I think half Latino. Yeah, yeah, yeah because it just made the body work richer and mm -hmm. interesting. Yeah. Again, have I sold these? I haven't sold these. I've been, I'm showing them right now in the gallery, a few of them. But the objective is practice. Yeah. Practice, practice, practice. And that was the main objective of this particular body of work. Wow. Wow. It's great. So do you have any favorites there? Well, I see Cheeked. <laughs> And, <laughs> he's um, funny. He's an who, is the, right? who is the lady to the right of him? I recognize her face. I'm terrible. Penelope Cruz. Yeah, Penelope Cruz. Exactly. And, and that's the beauty of this. Yeah. yeah. She's not Latin America. Because, no oh, she's Spanish. Yeah, but she's from Spain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I remember Latin, her early she's movies. Yeah. Central yeah. America. Yeah. But she's actually from Spain. Spain yeah. And to her right is um, Banderas, Antonio Bandera, which yeah. is all. He's but, another Spaniard, yeah. Yeah, so I try to mix it up. I even got the bad guys in there. I know, I see them. The <laughs> second, this is a terrible name. <laughs> you always get, you know, bad yeah. roles as a bad guy like yeah. Danny Trejo. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So I, mean, I have fun doing this. It, this yeah, is, it's great. It's fun it's fun to see friends. these these images because it take you sit there and you try to recognize them and go like, oh, okay, that's great. And nobody's yeah. ever done this. I think it's a great, great idea to put them all together so people can see it all together and see the history of it all together. It's yeah. great. <laughs> oh, they're definitely a fun project. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So here's another learning, you know, bodies of work. Yeah. Um, yeah. If you're an artist, first you need to define what is your style. Yeah. This may change over time. Mm -hmm. In this presentation, you'll see how I have changed my style. Yes. But once you find something that you find enjoyment, mm -hmm. then you have a body of work. Mm -hmm. Now, that body of work represents your style. Mm -hmm. In this case, is representing my portraits. Mm -hmm. If you notice that the color palette on every one of them is exactly mm -hmm. the color palette. So I'm practicing the same color palette yeah. 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 over and over until I complete my body of work. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So the next slide has another body of work which I'm particularly proud of as well. This is my favorite right here. You know that. I think this is wonderful. You, The passion that you bring to these women and your colors is phenomenal. I, I just, I love this. You know I love it. <laughs> yes. And this this right. is actually three years in the making. I, yeah. It took me three years to paint these 20 mm -hmm. and it's supposed to be 24. Yeah. Um, but I yeah. stopped 20 
Now, what's interesting about this is mm -hmm. I'm a person. I love music. Mm -hmm. um, I don't have a voice for singing. I don't play any instruments. Mm -hmm. I make believe yeah. I do, but I don't. Yeah. But I also like blues music. Yeah. So I picked up this encyclopedia mm -hmm. that was history of blues and jazz. Yeah, yeah. Started reading throughout mm -hmm. this entire encyclopedia, the blues section. Mm -hmm. I was totally amazed at the story behind these ladies. Mm -hmm. so these ladies actually came out of singing in church mm -hmm. right. age. Mm -hmm. And they entered this world of entertainment. Mm -hmm. To be honest with you, that world of entertainment, there's some bad stuff going on. Yeah. Alcohol, drugs, yeah. and what? Yeah. And some of these ladies were actually affected by that. Yes, they were. Yeah. They had beautiful lives and never was impacted by that environment. Mm -hmm. So we created this. I actually showed this in several places with their biography, explaining mm -hmm. facts about their life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Made it more of an educational piece. Mm -hmm. These are bigger than the Latinos in Hollywood. Mm -hmm. Latinos in Hollywood, they're all eight, eight by ten. Mm -hmm. These are twenty-two mm -hmm. by twenty-eight inch mm -hmm. portraits. Um, so each one of them has their story, and, and I enjoyed just reading about them. I mean, some sad stories, but oh, I mean, yeah, life. I mean, art is full of sad stories. Story. <laughs> um, my personal touch on this. Mm -hmm. Um, and I don't know if this is a good thing to say or not. Those backgrounds, I call them manly flowers. So <laughs> they're not trying to be delicate, beautiful flowers. They're my manly flowers. Hmm. But you notice every one of them, every one of them has a black sky. Yeah. And what I'm saying is behind the scene, mm -hmm. a lot of stuff going on. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you may see the colors and you may see the music and you may see them smiling, but there's more to it in being an entertainer. And that's where I felt it, it was a message that I wanted to get across, mm -hmm. especially to young people. Mm -hmm. Young people, they want to be a rock star. Well, you know, there's more to it than <laughs> the music itself. Yeah. You know, just the glory of singing. Um, Oh yeah, but my favorite. Which one? Right in the middle top, we have Ma Rainey. Yeah, Ma Rainey. Yeah, she's a, so she's yeah. considered the mother of blues. HBO just recently released uh, the the movie, movie Ma Rainey, yeah, which was um, pretty good, yeah. and I think it was nominated for some Oscars as well. Another one of my favorites, bottom second to the right, Coco Taylor. Mm. So painted her. She was still alive. Mm -hmm. Alive, they're they're all past. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they are. She's yeah. actually alive when I painted her. Wow, wow. And, and the rest of them, in, in the far bottom right, next to last, is Big Mama Thornton. She's from Texas. Mm -hmm. She sang Hound Dog. <laughs> Big Elvis Presley. She didn't make a penny on that song. No. Nope. And Elvis Presley made like a million dollars. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> which I find interesting. It was yeah. unfortunate for her. Yeah. yeah. He gives it a nice twist. I mean, they're both equally as good songs sung by, you know, great well, artists. The interesting thing about your paintings, despite the story, the backstories of all these women, you show them with such a positive, alluring happiness, which compliments them and i think that's important too despite all the struggles that people go through there is a light there is a creative uh response to what they're doing that makes them feel so passionate and happy and you really nail those portraits well I, i'm truly happy that you didn't notice that um, <laughs> i try to be I positive <laughs> <laughs> i try i try to be positive yeah. <laughs> see that's and, where we talked yeah. about printmaking well, and we told the story about um, technology and you know what what people are doing with their pictures. This is something you could all put together in print, and then I can ha can have one of all of them. <laughs> <laughs> you send me an email because I do have um, electronic copies well, of these. They're just they're wonderful. They're my favorite thing. All right, we got to move on because <laughs> okay, I could sit here and talk all day about those. Now you're into your figurative art tango series, and this is where. I see a lot of Picasso and some of the really 
famous art, uh, Latin artist, and you show that passion in your figurative art, and I think that's really interesting. Yes, and this is more so on the figurative side. Mm -hmm. but what we've seen up to the moment really were just portraits. Mm -hmm. This dives deeper into messages. Mm -hmm. So my particular artist statement from this is, People are the most beautiful thing God ever created. Mm -hmm. But shit, are they complicated. <laughs> yeah. I That's why we have artists. <laughs> it can bring that. <laughs> so what I try to do is use colors yeah. to represent the beauty of people. Mm -hmm. And I get into some messages and some stories that are real life. Mm -hmm. This particular series is only two pieces mm -hmm. in the for the very first two figurative paintings that I did. And I call it Tangle 1 and Tangle 2. Mm -hmm. They're nudes and I censored it a little bit. But yeah, I noticed. Why did you censor it? Oh, uh, <laughs> if we put this on YouTube, you know, we got to go, you know. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, okay. So <laughs> we have the two figures. Uh -huh. My message here is these two figures could find happiness. Mm-hmm. And that's where they're in the spotlight. Mm -hmm. But if you look at the back wall is my statement wall. Mm -hmm. Them as Uncle Sam, which is representative of war. Yeah. And the other one is Joe Camel, which is cigarette related to diseases and habits and oh, this habits. Yeah. So what and what I'm saying is the, these couples they could still find their happiness. Mm -hmm. They could Mr. Tango, even mm -hmm. though all this is going on around them, mm -hmm. but they need a little bit of help. And mm -hmm. then that little third figure comes in. Mm -hmm. We have to have relationship. Mm -hmm. Our internal relationship within the couple, we always need other people to sort. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. and, and he's actually playing the music while they're mm -hmm. dancing the tango. This work, I actually saw in California uh -huh. in my career. And I was a little bit um, kind of like concerned because the yeah. person who bought it gave me his business card. This guy's a professor, one of the major universities in the Los Angeles area, and his mm -hmm. PhD. The oh. minute I read that, it says, I'm going to starve here if everyone's got to be a PhD to buy my art. <laughs> but but oh, I was. No that don't have PhDs, which made me feel good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I like the contrast of the light and dark. Um, Thank you. It really highlights the figures and especially in the woman. I mean, you really, the beauty of her stretching and it's really, it's very nice. You yeah. know what was interesting? That this doctor that bought these two pieces, he bought both of them, mm -hmm. he was his wife. And his wife said to me, why are the women more refined than me? <laughs> and my answer was, isn't that true in real life as well? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was a good answer. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, she is very refined. That's the interesting thing. Um, the way she stretches and stretches out, I, you know, I, I, I don't understand why you didn't see that. It's just interesting. Anyway. Yeah. All right, so the next one, again, yeah. is figurative work. So mm -hmm. this series I call Impossible Love. Uh -huh. Remember my mission, my artist statement. People are the most beautiful thing, but they have mm -hmm. complex lives. Mm -hmm. Sometimes mm -hmm. your love may seem like impossible. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. here. So yeah. on the far left side, the woman is unreachable. Mm -hmm. I mean, literally, she's flying. Uh, obviously, it's a metaphor mm -hmm. for that is totally unreachable. Even mm -hmm. though you walk to the end of the world, because you can see the city in the background, mm -hmm. you get to the top of the mountain, trying to uh, conquer this woman, you know, trying to find love from this woman, mm -hmm. and it's impossible. The other one basically is the same message. Mm -hmm. You know, to the top of the world, he thinks he's, he's king, but mm -hmm. there's your love is at the bottom, not up there with the crown, is what mm -hmm. I'm saying. And the third one is, um, it's a really deep message. Because if you look at the male figure, 
he's behind his, uh, like a jail cell, mm -hmm. but suspended in the air. So mm -hmm. it's symbolic, symbolic of whatever is preventing this couple to unite. Mm -hmm. Now, it could be as a result of society, I don't know, religion, I don't know, some government thing, mm -hmm. but it's getting in the way of love, and that's mm -hmm. why we call it Impossible mm -hmm. Love 3. Hmm. And the last, yeah, okay. Now this yeah, is- Yeah, so the last one is the one with the, the jail cell suspended. Ah, okay, okay. Yeah. Oh. And I moved on and I started working on some small 16 by 20s. Mm -hmm. so a lot of times I buy quantities. Mm -hmm. So I, I bought a whole bunch of 16 by 20s and just started creating different little themes, mm -hmm. all 16 by 20. And oh. I'm yeah. And I do try to express myself. Yeah. Some of them are actually like political statements. Mm -hmm. I'm really careful with my political statements. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I have political statements, but I'm really careful. I, I'm, I'm truly yeah. very protective of my image from a political point of view. Yeah. Well, I noticed in both the middle and the one on the right, with the, the man on the uh, the bicycle, your your strokes are beginning to get different. They're not as finely tuned. This this is more palette stroke and big strokes that you're doing. So it, it's interesting to see this evolution. That's a really interesting yeah. observation. Yeah. And basically, I'm loosening up. Yeah. And I say yeah. loosening up mm -hmm. for me is less important than perfection. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's more about, I want this to look yeah. like, a, not like a photograph. Yeah. And that's why you have the heavier brush strokes, contrasts yeah. of colors, things that are incomplete, mm -hmm. and things that are misaligned. Mm -hmm. At this stage of my art career, I was being more myself. Mm -hmm. and to find that perfection in every piece mm -hmm. but they all have little messages i mean look at the middle one that's a dollar bill well, yeah background. yeah well um, you're kind of going from the impressionist to the expressionist <laughs> expressionist that's a really good term because that's yeah. exactly what i'm trying to do yeah i can see that so it's more memory. about the message yeah what i'm expressing yeah. than you know a rough technique mm -hmm. very much so technique um, but they're all little messages. Um, yeah, no, they're great. One. Now, this no. one's a little bit, the first two are a little bit more refined. Mm -hmm. And um, I call them um, Silent Tango 1 and Silent Tango 2. Okay. This is actually from a reference of a photograph of a friend of mine's that mm -hmm. went to Argentina where they invented the tango. Right. These kids, they just pose. If you look at the instruments they're broken instruments they're not really playing them because they're broken instruments and that's oh, why it's silent tango and all they do is they just pose and the tourist comes in and takes photographs of them and hopefully they'll make a little money oh. um, they're not real musicians the, the instruments are broken wow i call it silent tango yes very much yeah wow and again 16 by 20 and then for right, um she's like a joker Mm -hmm. uh, so there's street, not. yeah, the street uh, vendors. Yes, oh. but everybody's observing her. She's being clownish. She's being, um, mm -hmm. but she's smarter than all of them. Look at the. Oh, you can see that in her face. You got it. <laughs> and I saw a Ruby cube that was actually yeah. put together, yeah. which I've never done, which yeah. I've spent hours trying to put it back to the original colors. Yeah. Yeah. Never ever successful as that, but she was. Yeah. <laughs> Oh dear, <laughs> oh, it's a great. Oh, look at this, yeah. So the first one, I did a lot of traveling. Mm -hmm. The first one is actually a waitress in a restaurant. I told her, hey, can I take your picture? Yeah. Just, it it's another reference for me to paint. <laughs> the one is, is the shoe shine. Yeah. And this is in um, Nicaragua, in mm -hmm. most of Central America. And this guy, he just shines shoes. He was actually, listening to uh horse races oh hopefully you know maybe hit it big and stop shoe shining mm -hmm. 
And the far right is um, Guatemala. Yes. And that's called a marimba. So it's, it's an, a real instrument from, from Guatemala. Huh. Yeah, these people pose for me. And I'll mm -hmm. give them a bucks. And mm -hmm. happy and I'm happy. I got a reference. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, 2013. So what happened in 2013 yeah. is I got transferred. I was actually living in Texas from 2010 mm -hmm. to 2013. Mm -hmm. And my company decided without my consent, without my approval, you're going to California. Oh. Um, and they didn't even give me an option. The only option they gave me was, Jose, if you don't want to go to California, you no longer work for us. So they put me in California. My family decided we're not going to California. <laughs> Thought it was in Texas, my wife, my grand, my grandson, they all stayed behind. And I lived in California for two years alone. Mm -hmm. And that's why it says a journey of isolation. Mm -hmm. Isolated me from my family. Artistically, it created a new body of work, a new perspective on my art. So at the end of the day, I think there's a positive behind it, mm -hmm. um, but it, it was not by choice that I was. No, no. Yeah. So I call it Journey 13 because I started working with larger canvases. Mm -hmm. so here's the, the the very first large canvas that I created, okay. and then, uh, a video of the creation of life. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about real life. I'm talking about the work is called like the title of right. the art. So that was the process that I followed. Um, right in the middle, towards the top, there is a red ticket with a number. Mm -hmm. I was a member of a photography club, and I won a photo shoot by a photographer. Uh -huh. That was the ticket that won me that photo shoot, and those photographs that you saw was during the photo shoot. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. prepared very well for that photo shoot and I finished that painting which is four feet by four feet in 73 minutes whoa not a hundred percent I'm gonna say 90 percent completed because she only gave me an hour yeah <laughs> then, wow. a little bit um but in 73 minutes I need 90 percent and what I'm doing is going through a journey of life where mm -hmm. there's social security representative of work where there's a report card representative of education, you know, there, there's an electrocardiogram, health, the heart, um, the recipe, the dollar sign, the secrets we have in life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's representative of a journey throughout life. And for that particular style, you'll notice within the next few um, paintings, they're all large, they all have an eye. Yeah, and it's la vida, la vida, la vida, life, 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 yeah. Yeah, it's also in, in, in German, mm -hmm. Spanish, and ah, okay. Yeah, I see that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So here is part of that body of work. Mm -hmm. it's a little larger. Ooh, On the right hand side, you'll see the eye coming out again. The big yeah. eye. Yeah. And you did so all I, this when you were in California. Yes. Wow. And all during the, the year 2013. 2013, okay. okay. Happened in 2014, which I changed my style again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, but yeah, these are all large works. There's the eye. Yeah. Uh, of course, being in California, Hollywood. Yeah. You know, yeah. The, the one on the far right hand side, or, or the right hand side, is actually an image of MapQuest. Huh. 
Isn't yeah, this I see it. Yeah. Needs to print it off the internet. <laughs> Um, discovery, a little seascape. Uh huh. Um, they're all large works, five feet by four feet. Wow. They're square. Yeah. And um. Facebook, Lincoln. Uh, again, all this happened. Love you. <laughs> in 2013. 2013. Oh. Now, here, now I want you to observe that even though all those works were done in 2013. There were works I did prior to that. Yeah. Squares, two feet huh. by three, 24 by 24. Yeah. So the one on the left side was actually created in 2012. Mm -hmm. Rome, just that one piece. Mm -hmm. 2014, I did 100 words. I call this conceptual work. Mm -hmm. Notice yeah. the dates 2012, mm -hmm. 2014. Mm -hmm. Here's yeah. what happened in 2015. Yeah. All right, now we're into what we know you best for, and that's this the is what I'm best for. media conceptual <laughs> art, yes. So, definitely. in, in that story that's actually written there, mm -hmm. true story, when I was, I was still in Texas, um, remember 2010 to 2013, uh -huh. I was instructor, so I was driving to San Antonio to do a workshop. Uh -huh. I 35 South, you probably know the route, yeah, and I stopped at this little antique shop. And I bought a couple of things, but as I'm walking out, I saw a pile of rusty metal. And on top of that rusty metal, there was a cowbell. Oh, whoa. It had a hose in it, uh, but it had beautiful colors. Yeah. So, man, yeah, the metal bucks. Yeah. yeah. It wasn't, and, and we're talking about, this is like 2012, 2013. Yeah. It wasn't until 2015 that I actually <laughs> used the cowbell. And I said, and that's the cowbell right there. See the yeah. holes in it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, but that was a turning point. Mm -hmm. The turning point where I decided to define that style that I that I do today, which is the three D media. Yeah. Even though I did a couple of works prior to that, this was the turning point right there. Um, well, all, telling that story, all your the technique, video. yeah, comes together in these paintings. I think. So here's how, how it happened. Just a little video explaining what I just explained. It's been 20 years since I decided to become an artist. My journey has taken many turns and many detours. Each detour and each turn with a lesson that has made me what I am today. The one moment that I could describe where there was a turning point in my art career occurred in 2014. In 2014, I decided to create art that was meaningful, art that was playful, art that was interactive, and art that evoked conversation. This was not by intention. It was actually inspired by an object. And that object was a cowbell that I found on one of my trips for my day job at the time, um, going from Dallas to um, San Antonio, Texas, I stopped at this small antique shop and found this old, rusty, corroded cowbell that inspired what I do today. It's a body of work of 3D mixed media. The body of work has grown beyond just painting cows. It now includes abstract portraits and conceptual work, but it all started by painting cows. And within my style, cows are interactive and playful. That's my story as how I rediscovered, how I reinvented myself and today I continue with this style. I have had fun doing it and it's very, very satisfying. My name is Jose Angel Hernandez and my website is wordsandcolors.net. Thank you. So from one cow, look what happened. Yep. And that's actually in, in a museum in California. Oh, wow. Called um, 
the yeah. Latino Art Museum. Mm -hmm. Soto show there, and I showed every one of those works. But it went beyond just cow. Mm -hmm. Cow was kind of like the beginning of the animals. Yeah. I said, why not paint other animals? Mm -hmm. Most I've painted have been cows. The most I've sold have been cows, followed by monkeys. Monkeys is number two. Yeah. But cows are number one. Um, I like your snake. <laughs> <laughs> your cobra. It's you know, you've got it to smile, and I think that's what is the um, the metal or the piece that you have in the snake's mouth. It's it's hard to see. Yeah, and you can't really see it because it's really on top yeah. of a lion. So those those Chinese kind of like round bells that you touch, yes, okay, okay, they make an echo echo mm -hmm. sound. Mm -hmm. To the right of that snake is a piece I sold in um mm. in Texas. Cheap. Okay. Yeah, it's a black sheep. Yep, it's great with the bell. <laughs> but but this is what what I'm best known for, and yeah. is never gonna stop because I just keep making more and more. Although yeah. lately I just been focusing on cows. Well, um, what you what you do, what I feel you do with your animals is that you you make them human with expressions and passions that come out. The way they they tilt their head, the colors that you use the depth of the animal becomes the human within us. And I think that's that's why people gravitate towards it. And it creates a yeah. conversation. When, when I had that solo, that, that's a good observation. When I had that, that solo in California, yeah. they were all around you. Mm -hmm. And one of um, the walkers of the show said, you know, it does feel a little creepy in here. <laughs> Oh, with dear. those eyes, because they're all looking straight That's right, at you. they follow you. All those eyes looking <laughs> at you. <laughs> that is true. That is very true. <laughs> yeah, yeah but, I, but I definitely have fun with these animals. Mm -hmm. And I paint things that are not really common. You no. know, they're no. not your common animals. Some of them are. Yeah. And, you know, they're, they're, I mean, who's going to buy my, my vulture? I don't know, but I'm going to buy a vulture. <laughs> I mean, I didn't paint a regular sheep. I painted a black sheep, you know, and that's what I do. All right. Well, you you might be surprised. Somebody creating a, a restaurant around you know, vultures or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Somebody who's into goth might like your vulture. Uh, no, I think they're wonderful. They make me laugh. They make me feel things inside of me which you bring out. I mean, I love. I guess it's the the white mouse or the marmot. I mean, I love her eyes looking at you like, uh-huh, honey, I got your number. <laughs> yeah, that was a possum. Possum, okay. It's great. It's yeah, really and you know when I do art fairs, which I do as many as I can, mm -hmm. kids love going into my booth. <laughs> Those kids love animals. <laughs> yeah, they they, they want to touch my art, and I let yeah, them. Yeah, 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 yeah. The bells, at least. Yeah, you want to put a story to them. That, that's what they say to me. I'm going to tell you a story. And you've done oh, a yeah. nice job. Oh yeah, oh yeah, definitely. I I entertain the kids just as yeah. much as I do the adults. Yep, absolutely. Uh, <laughs> oh my goodness, that's great. Okay, now so we're this, into mixed media conceptual art that you do. Again, one one learning that I've learned over the years is mm -hmm. be smart. <laughs> so when I say be smart, I'm talking about be smart financially. If you looked at all those animals, they all had exactly the same frame. Mm -hmm. Exactly the same frame, mm -hmm. 24 by 24. I buy them all in, in, in boxes of, you know, I'll order 20 of these frames. Mm -hmm. Then I mentioned that's working smart. Mm -hmm. I'm out of frames. I just got to remove one of these from a frame and put the other artwork. In. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Besides that, it makes it into a body of mm -hmm. where there's a consistency. Mm -hmm. They have a connection. They mm -hmm. make different themes, but they all have the same frame. Mm -hmm. So in Hey, it is a body of work that is consistent. Mm -hmm. um, this work here is actually my conceptual work. Mm -hmm. At the top, this is all 2020 work. Mm -hmm. um, you know, justice for all. I mean, we all know what happened in 2020. Right, yeah. yeah. Equilibrium yeah. is about politics as well. Mm -hmm. um, the definition of equilibrium is mm -hmm. you need the balance, the equality between those in power and the people. Mm -hmm. 20, I think that explains itself. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you see the uprise, you see um, mm -hmm. the separation with the, with the white fence or the white um, yeah. separation. Yeah. And of course, you see the pandemic up in the air. Right. 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 Then travel, I use a lot of words. Mm -hmm. um, 
the bottom left is actually bottle caps. I was, <laughs> yeah, wow. I, I don't design the bottle caps. I just convert them into art. Wow. Um, How did you they, find so many different bottle caps? Um, it's the internet. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <the great laughs> <point>. <laughs> yeah, and, and wow. they're not used. They're unused bottle caps. Wow. Um, and I just put it, I, I, I do the composition and mm -hmm. just whatever image I want because they have all kinds of images. Wow. Um, huh. So yeah, and I consider all of this conceptual art. Mm -hmm. it is, yeah. It's to create yeah. a conversation. Yep. Um, so at the bottom right, there's a hundred words. I've done like five or six of these and people play games with it. Oh, wow. So huh. next to that one, to the left, is actually some Chinese um, instrument, mm -hmm. which I I know the name of the instrument. It looked like a light, like a ship to me. So I said, well, this is going to be a journey. And yeah. it's the huh. quotes at the top related to journeys. Huh. So that's my conceptual art. Mm -hmm. Again, when I do my 3D mixed media, it's got animals. It's got conceptual art. Mm -hmm. My abstract portraits. Uh -huh. Next. Yes, here we go. Yeah. So if you look at the far left, obviously that's Einstein. Mm -hmm. His forehead is Newton's cradle. So when I show that in an art fair, kids love it because I actually let them pick up, you know, one or two of the little balls and watch it kick over. them go back and forth. <laughs> so it's interactive oh, and it's very playful. Oh, wow. Of course, Frida, which I painted many times. Yes, yes. Bob Marley. Yeah. The three dimensional element for Bob Marley, what do you think it is? Um, hair, yarn, a wig. I don't know. No, no, he's got his hair, but around his neck, he's got a necklace. Oh, I see it. Okay, yeah. Uh, I don't know. Is it a pin? Well, technically, it's called a roach clip. Oh, <laughs> should have known with Bob Marley. Sorry about that. <laughs> he enjoyed that. I have to enlarge this. Ah, okay. <laughs> He was a representative. He was very open about that. Oh, God, yeah. Oh, yeah. my. Oh, yeah, my. Yeah. And I have fun making these as well. You do. <laughs> okay. So, on the far left, I, I have a work that I'm extremely proud of. Mm -hmm. Zoom. A Zoom, is a, it's a, it comes from Latin, and mm -hmm. it means here, I'm present. It's a woman. Oh, yeah. But one of her earrings is a pencil. That says cum laude, oh. which is terminology from university. Yeah. You know, students. Laude, yeah. And yeah. the the other earring is a teardrop because we all do a little bit of suffering in life. Yeah. Her neck, she's got a little heart mm -hmm. relationship, okay. yeah. and you can't really see it here. She's got two weapons, like a cannonball and a stick. So mm -hmm. I mean, she's ready to uh, take on the world, and mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's, it's a very strong piece. Very strong. It is. And the way you've used your color, she's kind of emerging, if you will. It's yeah. kind of like a hologram. She's coming together. And these are the things that you're bringing together and you're painting with her. You know, what she's accomplished is the dark. And then all the lights and reds and blues are, it's like, here I come. I'm coming together with this power and knowledge. It's very good. I got to remember that for my sales pitch. <laughs> <laughs> like you get my bill. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the middle one is a triangle, so it's a real instrument. Yeah. And striker oh. for that triangle is actually a hairpiece. Yeah. And it does oh. work. It's a real triangle. Oh, fun! How fun! Oh. Yeah, you the, let it the, hang when it's showing, so people can use it, or you just put it in the painting, and that's it. Um, I usually take it out because I lose it. Yeah, okay. Forget it when I bring it to a car show, but that particular one has sold. I sold that one already, but I have another oh, one. Okay, cool. Yeah, I don't keep it on there because I'd lose it. Yeah, I'd yeah. Pull it out. So I put it in my pocket. Sometimes I forget it at home. <laughs> but it's yeah. a striker for the triangle. Yeah. I w it is, it's a woman, right? Because it, it almost yes. looks like a Buddhist reincarnation of a woman. With the triangle. Yeah, it's a in, yeah. in meditation. Yes, meditation, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. The next one yeah. on the end. Oh, oh. Yeah. oh, the end one has a lot of metal. Uh huh. 
It's got a moon. But notice that's a different technique. Yeah. Huh. A totally different technique that I use on a face. Again, the process of exploration. Yeah. Yeah. I've done a couple like that, but most of them are done like the ones on the left side. Okay. Okay. So, <laughs> this is a scary one. Some people actually say my art could be scary. And you see the piece on the right hand side, the far mm -hmm. right. I, mm -hmm. That was actually censored out of a show. Really? It was wow. just too much. They said, no, we're not going to show that. Oh. I said, that's fine. You have all the rights. Yeah. And it's actually called Inner Thoughts. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's got a broken chain. So the liberty to, to think freely mm -hmm. is the mm -hmm. message behind that one. The one on the far left is empowerment. So it's got the little Superman S. Mm hmm and um, the one in the middle is actually a metaphor. <laughs> Before, after, yeah. Yeah. you know, yeah. pros, cons, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. action, consequences. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a metaphor. Mm -hmm. I think I think that's all I have. Okay. As, uh, well, I, mean, I, I have a lot, a lot more work, but I don't want to, you know, bombard you with slides and slides. And no, slides. no, Jose, it's been wonderful because it's so much fun to see an artist grow from starting with your portraits and then you know your figurative and then your 3D, but you're taking what you started with and bringing it in with your colors and your style and your movement and your passion. And it's wonderful. It's just wonderful. Thank you. So I, I thank you. can't thank you enough for allowing us to see all this. This is great. In fact, I'm going to give you a, a clap. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I appreciate it. And I also want to thank um, our little production team of Susan Murray and Madhu Pardo. Um, it's been great. And I think we can, uh, uh, Madhu, I think we can uh, open up for questions if people have them. Well, I would like to tell Jose, he has an impressive body of work, unbelievable. And I don't know, looking at it, which one I like the best. Because <laughs> all of them have something that I really like. But let me ask you about the last one that you say was prohibited. Why was that? I don't see anything on that that could be, uh, you know, offensive or anything like that. What did they tell you? It, it was a public space. So it wasn't a gallery. It wasn't a museum. It was actually a public space with right. offices. And when they looked at that work, they said, it reminds me too much of a person that has been involved in a car accident and their brain is out of their head. Yeah. That was not my intention. I'm showing the power of his brain. Right. Wow. His inner thoughts and the liberty of using those in us, but they connected it because of the redness. Um, Whoa, the redness, oh, they connected here, it yeah. to blood. It's really, really subjective. <laughs> what they do doesn't make to me any sense. Yeah. Yeah, and, and I mean, I'm going to respect everyone's opinion. Sure. Mm -hmm. It is strong work, and that's the kind of artist I am. I don't have a problem making some strong statements. But in this case, they got the wrong message. And yeah. I can understand that because everyone has their own opinion on things. Well, well bravo for you because I love that. I like the one in the middle, though. Yeah, that, that one is one of I my like favorites because it's a metaphor. <laughs> I like the expression he has beneath all the coloring. <laughs> you know, yeah. it's, it's, it's really great. Yeah, and that, that's a, a plastic on his forehead representing the brain. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's, it's like melted oh, yeah. plastic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, to me, it's very strong and tell me a lot of things. Actually. Yeah. Um, it, to me, it showed me a lot of the uh, automaton type of uh, people around now. That's what it tell me. You know, the type of people that are constantly with uh, the gadgets and the, um, the telephone and the cell and they don't pay attention to anything but the, the little gizmo they have. 
and, and it's like an empty suit <laughs> in yeah. a way. That's what it gives me. Yeah, and, and you know what's interesting? When people ask me, like if I'm showing this work, and they tell me, you know, what's your message behind this work? I tell them, what are you getting out of it? Yeah. Many interpretations you could have of this particular piece that I don't want to spoil your thoughts. No, don't. <laughs> and for me, it was past experience, process, new experience. But okay. what you had in mind, you know, maybe you connect. I think art, people find ways to connect with it, but they're not gonna connect necessarily with my message. It's what they connect with is their Hello? own interpretation. Hello? I'm really careful when I ask Hello? questions about my work, because I want them to come up with their own conclusions. Mm -hmm. You see, once they buy the art, that ownership is not mine. I mean, I don't own the piece. So it's your piece, it's your wall, and you decide the story behind it. <laughs> How I feel about it. Right. You know, you just adopted it. They're no longer my kids. They're your kids now. <laughs> <laughs> That's the businessman in you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but and, and I don't I, I don't get emotionally attached to any of my pieces. Hmm. Do they show them in the house? Sure. Do I enjoy them while I'm showing them in the house? I absolutely do. Do I look at them every day? Just about. But the minute I, I put it out on a show and somebody likes it more than me, that's it. Yeah. Or thank you. <laughs> <laughs> when you finish these pieces, are you emotionally exhausted? Oh, that's um, some of them drain me just thinking about what I'm going to do. Some of them actually. I spend more time thinking about the work up here before I actually do anything. Mm -hmm. Physically, they don't drain me because I work in process. Mm -hmm. So obviously, I got to prepare the board. Mm -hmm. Prepare boards. I prepare two or three boards at a time. Mm -hmm. I paint my main figure, mm -hmm. and then I just leave it alone mm -hmm. and come back a few days because I'm an oil painter. Mm -hmm. And add background, 3D elements, yeah. you know, little yeah. details. So one piece will not drain me physically, but it will drain me, you know, mentally. Just mentally, think. yeah. I was going to say. It's, it's, it's got to tell me something. Yeah. yeah. Gotta, and the funny thing is, sometimes it's not my thought, it's the object. So those on the middle one, they look like real to real. Those old enough to know what a real to real <laughs> Is, yeah, that's what they're representing. Yeah, in case it was not that I wanted to do that, and they're not even actually real to real. Mm -hmm. Actually, you know how when you buy wire at Home Depot, it comes in a roll. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they look like real to real. Mm -hmm. So a couple of those, I said, this is how I'm going to use this. Mm -hmm. So they did not work was the object. So I didn't have to think too much about this one. Yeah. Um, but if you look at the other one, the one that, that was censored, I mean, I had to think a lot about that. How you know, about, how can I make that? this yeah. where so, it's got a story, the inner thought? Well, it takes me a while to come up with those conclusions. Yeah. The one on the end, the man in the green shirt, to yeah. me, it, I, I would think it would be challenging to keep that emotion going because it swirls and swirls and swirls and swirls and to find what kind of feeling you want to put into this space. It's just, wow. I mean, I would be physically exhausted after doing that because that to me is a very intense picture. Yeah, and sometimes I don't get it done right from the get-go. <laughs> yeah. Go yeah. back and rework it and mm -hmm. more pain or scratch some of it off. Mm -hmm. um, because it, it's not, those are not brush strokes. No. That paint is actually poured on. Yeah, yeah. Huh. Yeah. But I keep staring at it, and you, <laughs> his eyes keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger. <laughs> <laughs> this is one if I had on my wall, I'd have to walk away like this. It's like you're following me. And it's just weird. It's like, just, okay, it's coming out. <laughs> It's a powerful piece. It really is. So uh, earlier, I was um, having a conversation with Michelle. You guys were 
on a Zoom meeting and I gave her a little peek of, on some of my new work. Yeah. Trying to cater to a younger audience. Mm -hmm. In this case, I'm trying to cater to uh, the culture, or the hip hop culture. Yeah. So I'm going to give you, this is work in progress. Oh, it's but, great. <laughs> I think they like the green guy, guy too. <laughs> Yeah. Oh. Oh. Yeah. So kind of like the same pouring technique. I got a little bit more creative with the colors. Open oh. mouth. And the reason that he has an open mouth is because I'm going to hang a microphone. Oh. A real microphone. In 3D element. But what I'm doing is applying the same style to a different theme, which is for younger people. Yeah. Yeah. Also, yeah, I find some young people that like that work. Yeah, I think so. Hey, Debbie, Jose. Yes, Jose. Donna, how you doing? Fine, I want that for the gallery. You Seriously, are? I want that one for the gallery. <laughs> I'm, Seriously. I'm actually working on a couple of them. Look, I just showed you one. Here's the female version of that. Whoa. Wow. It's great. So here, you can't see it. And again, I work in progress. That's my figure, but right here it says hip hop culture. And, and I'm gonna give it a, a grayish tone because I want my main subject to be the centerpiece of all this. Yeah. Yeah. So even the title hip hop culture is gonna be grayed out. I don't want it to steal from my from my portrait. <laughs> yeah, right. You don't want to do that. Yeah, the main attention <laughs> is really the portrait. They're interested in that the emotion, that feeling that you're putting into the painting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I plan on doing at least, um, at least have 10 of these. Um, I, I have a lot of animals. So I got to build my, up my inventory of abstract portraits and conceptual work. Mm -hmm. So this is the beginning of building more abstract portraits. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. I have a, another question. I, I'm sorry, I didn't get the connection. Physically did not get the connection to join. So I missed a bunch of what you were saying. Are you saying that you pour these, the faces, you're pouring them? The paint I'm pouring on there, on these abstract portraits. Wow, so how do you do that? Actually pour. Um, I mean, I know what pouring is, yeah, but I, I, us I see usually see it uh, less confined than you would have to do it for those. Yeah, and I'm still exploring how I pour it. If you notice the one on the left side here looks totally different from what I just showed you, the new work. Mm -hmm. So again, as well as three are totally different pouring techniques than the two that I'm working on right now. Um, so yeah, I don't want them to all look exactly the same, but basically it's the same technique. It's a pouring technique. Hmm. Okay, I, I get dibs on that one though. Or cross the <laughs> right. Put your orders in now. That's okay. Yeah. I want the blues lady, so. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, Michelle, I think Debbie had a question. Um, okay. I think she was trying to unmute herself. Uh, oh, okay. Hi, Debbie, Betty. go ahead. Debbie, I, go ahead. I don't know if we lost her. Okay, I don't know. Okay, sorry, go ahead uh, with the other questions and we'll come back to it. I didn't have any other questions. Uh, Dulce, uh, Susan, whoever else is out there, would do you have any questions? Well, this is a wonderful, this is wonderful, wonderful. Thank yeah. you. And you know, I love Rita Moreno. For me, she's a great <laughs> actress. No, really. Yeah. Yeah. Is, is a reference. Yeah. 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 That woman is incredible. I think she's like 90 years old. I know. And I, know. I saw her and she's wonderful. She looks wonderful. Yeah. yeah she's got a great attitude, great personality. Yeah. And a great actress. She's so beautiful. She was beautiful when she did West Side Story. Oh my God. That's what I know. I knew her and it was a big impact to me. Yeah. I, yeah. I'll never forget that. I, I, I never forget her act, acting there. It was just great. Yes, I agree. Mm -hmm. 
you know, they're going to do a remake of West Side Story. And she's yeah, going to be in it. What I don't know what. <laughs> I think she's going to be one of the ladies who makes the wedding gown or the, the dresses. Um, I, but that's what she did. I don't know what she's going to be playing that's, this time. But she, yeah, she did the, uh, the the sister of one of the gang members. Mm -hmm. Bernardo. And a very close, and a very close friend you. of the main character. Ah, yeah. She has a... She has an 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 a, an a scene when she go to to the cafe, mm -hmm. try to dissuade people, and they attack her. Oh. That that was unbelievable. That that particular and yeah, I'm yeah. talking about the singing and dancing and all of that. But I'm talking about a the dramatic part. Yeah. She she was you know yeah, she's she really good to her heart. Um, mm -hmm. I'm terrible at remembering actors' names, but the young man who does Hamilton is going to be dropping a film called The Heights. And it's about the Puerto Rican section of the Bronx and Brooklyn. And it's in a musical form, very similar to, I think, what we saw with Hamilton. And that's gonna be dropped sometime in the next week, which should be interesting. Yeah. Is that Broadway or is it a movie? No, it's a movie. It's gonna stream. Oh, it's a big screen, good. Yeah. They're gonna stream it. It may be in a, you know, going to a movie theater, but there, it's it's either H, HBO Max or one of the big streaming places is, is going to drop it. So, yeah. Good. It should be very interesting. Boy, Michelle, you're in the know. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I got all these kids around to get into all the social media sites. <laughs> they keep <can't> going. <laughs> oh, and I always, uh, well, we're getting off the uh, subject, but um, I kind of like the Today Show, and they have a really good. Um, spotlight where they highlight all kinds of artists, fine arts and performing arts and photography and all the things. And they, they make a, you know, once a week, they try to pick up something that's interesting. So I, that's a big change in, in regular television. So there's hope. <laughs> well, um, if anybody doesn't have any more questions, I think we will bring this wonderful evening to an end. And again, Jose, thank you, thank you, thank you. It has been informative. It has been wonderful. It's been fun. And I want to thank everybody who has participated, particularly Madhu and Susan, who are the co host and the production team, if you will. <laughs> and I want to wish everybody a healthy and safe Memorial Day weekend. And again, we will be doing another spotlight. Um, it will be a monthly occurrence. And if you look at the website, um, everybody will know. And again, thank you, thank you, thank you. And have a good evening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you, Jose. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.